Hey VC, this is Chad. Um, I wanted to do an introduction video, so I'm going to do the Vinyl Tag 2017. So let's get started here. Uh, number one is how many records do you own? Uh, I would say anywhere between five and 7,000 LPs. Currently I have about uh, 2,500 in Discogs and I have a whole nother room to get through. So that would be my best guess. Um, I also have about uh, six or seven hundred seven inches, and I do not plan to add those to Discogs anytime soon. So um, that's my best guess. Uh, what kind of record player do you have? Um, as you can might be able to see behind me, I have a Denon uh, DP300F. Uh, it's an automatic turntable. I upgraded the cartridge to a Shure M97 XE, so it's uh, pretty decent, so it's not the uh, best you can buy, but I uh, hope to upgrade sometime soon. Uh, how old were you when you started collecting records? Uh, I would say I was 14 years old. What's the oldest record you own? Um, the oldest record pressed is this Ferrante and Teacher. Uh, it's Blast Off. It's like a space age piano jazz lounge record. Um, I picked this up out of my local shop in the uh, men in space category. Sometimes they have weird stuff and I like the cover. So uh, I only got this maybe earlier this year. So. What's the first record you ever got? Um, I think the first record I ever bought was, that I remember was Twisted Sisters Under the Blade. Um, but I still have that somewhere around here. I just couldn't find it. Uh, my stuff isn't in alphabetical order currently. So uh, the second best thing I could find was this uh, Twisted Sisters Stay Hungry album. Um, I'm pretty sure I got this a little after that one, so Twisted Sister. The first record you ever bought with your own money, again, the details are a little uh, foggy for me, but one that I do remember um, hearing on a local college radio station and I sought it out uh, was a single from the band the Circle Jerks. Uh, this is actually a single for the song Wonderful and on the back is American Heavy Metal Weekend. Uh, this was released on Combat Core. I believe it was only in a black sleeve with maybe a hype sticker but uh, some of my records were damaged uh, with a uh, water incident involving a washer in a basement. So. I lost some of my collection, um, but I still have the original record here in a plain white sleeve, so Circle Jerks, wonderful. Uh, what's your favorite color vinyl? Uh, I'd say in general, clear vinyl is my favorite, uh, but uh, I'll just pick out one that I like, um, and that would be the soundtrack for The Fog, which is done by John Carpenter. Uh, this was actually reissued by Death Waltz Records maybe in 2013 or 14. And this pressing is actually on a color in color uh, white in uh, clear vinyl. And I think it suits the uh, title very well. So I think it's very foggy. So clear vinyl. What is a discount album you own? Uh, this one I got about 12 years ago at a record show uh, in my town. Um, David Bowie's Space Oddity, and it's actually a double LP. And the other LP contains The Man Who Sold the World. And I think this is a uh, French pressing, so pretty cool find for a buck. Uh, 
what is your prized possession? Um, I have a lot of records that I consider prized possessions, but I picked out one that uh, took me a while to get at a decent price, and that is Queens of the Stone Age, Songs for the Deaf. Um, this is one of my favorite records. I saw the band on this tour. Uh, this record is released on red vinyl on uh, Epicac Records. Um, there's a lot of bootlegs out there. Uh, there's a little flower etched in the dead wax uh, to tell that it's a legitimate pressing. Uh, this one hasn't been rep repressed, um, so I hope that they'll do that so I can give this copy a break. Uh, a record by a female artist. Um, a female artist that I have probably maybe 10 other records by her. This record is Hounds of Love by Kate Bush. Uh, this pressing is on uh, marbleized limited edition vinyl. Um, I think I got this for about maybe $18. It's a cutout, but it was sealed. So uh, I have a black vinyl pressing that sounds a little better than this one, but it looks cool. Uh, matches the you know the color of the, the jacket. So uh, this is a really great record. A record by your favorite band. Uh, I'm gonna say that could be the self-titled album from Danzig. Uh, this was released on uh, Rick Rubin's label, um, but this pressing is actually a UK pressing on London Records. It has different labels. Uh, the original US pressings also didn't have the name on the cover. I think it was just a hype sticker on the front, so this one is pretty unique. Uh, it's still a gatefold. Uh, for some reason, I only have one copy of this, but I'd like to find an original uh, U.S. pressing at some point as well. An Impulse Buy. Um, that one actually involves a few records. The same record, actually, which probably doesn't make sense to some of you, but uh, this one is the soundtrack for the movie the Force Awakens. Uh, the soundtrack is by John Williams, and it's Star Wars, so it's easier to justify. But I bought. They released this record on with four different covers. Um, I chose one at the time that I liked, and then the rest sold out pretty quickly. So um, I was happy with the one. And a few weeks ago, they had posted. You know some leftovers online and I um, jumped at the chance to buy the rest of them so there's uh, three more copies of it so I have four total and a regular version as well so uh, Star Wars Force Awakens and Pulse Buy a gift uh, a friend of mine actually sold his whole collection to a local store uh, he told me that he forgot about one that he had in the original mailer and wanted to know if I wanted it. So I said, sure. Uh, it turned out to be a split record from Sun and Boris called Alter, which I already owned on CD only. So that was pretty sweet. Uh, this record um, came on a, a blue vinyl here. And uh, it's a three LP set. Uh, it's pretty uh, substantial, it's pretty uh, thick gatefold, and it's pretty heavy. So uh, this is on Southern Lord Records. And uh, I actually do like this one a lot. So it's uh, doom, ambient kind of stuff. So the most played record. Um, I don't know if I know exactly, but I picked one that I do listen to a lot. Um, it's a record that goes by fairly quickly. 
Uh, so you can listen to it multiple times and uh, you know, still want to listen to it more. So it's one of my favorite covers of all times. It's Initium by Sam Hain. Uh, if you're not familiar, then uh, this is Glenn Danzig's band uh, before he started Danzig and after the Misfits. Uh, this is uh, a horror themed band, obviously, but more metallic than the Misfits and less bluesy than Danzig. And the imagery is very dark and uh, you know still horror oriented like the misfits but uh, i don't know these songs are uh, just incredible to me so this cover rules um, that's all i can say about this record uh, a rarity um, i went to my discogs and sorted by uh, price or something I believe and uh, came up with this one it's not the most expensive record I own but seemed like a lot of people have this on their want list um, and it's Echo by Akeem Reichel and Machines um, this is a kraut rock record and uh, the band I went Keep saying band but it's actually just Akeem Reichel and his machines hence the name A&R Machines. Um, this is an original pressing on Polydor uh, Germany and uh, this is a gatefold uh, 2 LP. Uh, I actually think that the first uh, A&R Machine record uh, The Green Journey is uh, much better than this one but uh, this is a pretty chill record, um, and a lot of people seem to want it. Uh, I like the cover art. It's a fold-out gay fold, and uh, I listen to this one a good bit. So, uh, Akeem Reichel and the Machines uh, Echo. A rainy day record. Um, I'm not sure I'm a, a rainy day record kind of guy, but uh, I took to the uh, theme literally and uh, I chose the record somewhere in here uh, the cults uh, love uh, because it has the song rain on it and uh, one of my other favorite songs uh, by the cult she sells sanctuary so uh, the cult and uh, I'm See here, I never took the price tag off of this one. I paid five dollars for it at a local shop uh, many years ago. So, a feel good album uh, again. I went with a literal theme here and I chose another one that I do like a lot, um, and that is Gorilla's Demon Days. And the song on here, Feel Good Inc. Um, yeah, it was pretty upbeat, so that's where I um, decided to choose this one. This is an original pressing on black vinyl on Parlophone. Um, it took me a few years to uh, find a copy at a decent price. Uh, and then uh, earlier this year, a few months ago, it was repressed on red vinyl by uh, the music service Vinyl Me, Vinyl Me Please. Uh, I also picked up that copy as well. So uh, it sounds pretty good. And hopefully they'll uh, have a legitimate pressing on black vinyl so I can uh, give this copy a break. So. A nostalgic record. Uh, that would be from 1984, I believe. And um, this was a record I used to play a lot. I originally had the cassette and uh, it is licensed to ill from the uh, Beastie Boys and uh, I don't know licensed to ill is a uh, classic hip-hop rap whatever record uh, rock I don't know it's uh, produced by uh, Rick Rubin uh, this is on uh, Def Jam 
uh, recordings. Um, this is a gatefold. Has the uh, classic "Eat Me" backwards on the cover. I always dug that. Uh, I have a, a lot of records by the Beastie Boys. Um, it's one of the few uh, hip hop bands or rap, whatever that I listen to. Um, and I have some fond memories of this one from being in grade school. So Beastie Boys, licensed to ill. Uh, a record store day purchase. So I actually do participate in rest record store day. I like um, waiting in lines. I know that sounds weird, but uh, I like to meet friends and uh, just hang out and talk to people about records. And, uh, you know, I, I look at the positive aspects of it. Uh, I just want the records, um, you know, people tend to focus more on the online selling and the, the uh, people that flip records, but I just try to ignore the hype and buy records that I like. So uh, one record that I got this year is actually a soundtrack for my favorite movie. Uh, this is also my favorite soundtrack of all times, and that is Blade Runner uh, by Vangelis. Um, this one is on a picture disc. Uh, thankfully, I have uh, a few other pressings of this that I can listen to. So I just bought this purely as a collectible um, record. Um, it doesn't sound half bad, but uh, I prefer to listen to the other copies that I have. So uh, Blade Runner, Vangelis. A recent purchase... Um, I was actually in uh, New York City over the weekend and hit up a lot of shops. Um, so I'll just uh, pull out uh, one of the records I bought, and that is American Assault by Venom. Uh, I actually have a copy of uh, French Assault and uh, didn't have this one. This is a uh, pressing from 1985 on Combat Records. Uh, there's a few live. Uh, tracks on the back side. Uh, there's six songs total, so can't go wrong with some classic Venom. So uh, that's about it. Um, in case you were wondering, what I was listening to is uh, Black Mass by Lucifer, aka Mort Garson. Um, I hope to do a video on uh, Mort Garson and some of his uh, Moog records at some point. So check this out if you don't have it. So thanks for listening. Um, hope to make some more videos soon. Uh, I tend to go record shopping weekly, but uh, I probably won't be making videos maybe every few weeks or so. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.